All right. Welcome, this is Imdog, and we are playing The Fisher Online. And this is, I guess, meant to be my intro video to this game, The Fisher Online. And so I'm going to ramble a little bit about just the uh, sort of what would be for me an introduction to this game. If you are just discovering it, it is uh, available on Steam. The Fisher, T H E F I S H E R, space online. Um, early access has not been out, I think, maybe around a week now. Some people were playing it in a, in a beta process before that. I did not play it in beta. So I have just started. In fact, I started playing a couple days after it released. So I'm sort of in the second wave, uh, I guess you could say, of playing. Um, but uh, if, if you are have been around my channel before, you know this. If not... You may know that I've done a lot of uh, videos in the past on uh, a variety of fishing games, primarily Russian Fishing 4. And um, in some ways, this game reminds me of, of Russian Fishing 4. It's, our, it's a lot earlier, obviously, in its development process. But it seems like another really solid fishing game that is now on the market. So I wanted to just introduce some basic aspects of the game. You do see we have some fishing rods over there. So I do I promise we will get some fishing in here on this first video. But primarily what I wanted to do um, was just sort of introduce this game to you. Show you the basic components of the game. Uh, there's not a tutorial yet. I don't know if there's plans to be a tutorial in this game. But... Um, Currently, there's not a tutorial. Uh, the controls can be found by, when you get in the game, if you hit F1, you can at least see the basic controls here in terms of what is going to be your shortcuts or the keys uh, to start playing or, or access different aspects of the game. But first, let's take a look at here where you spawn in uh, at this first map is right here, what, what I guess we kind of call camp. A lot of people refer to this as camp because it's on the map where the little tent is and each map uh, will have an area like this as well as other spawn points if they've been implemented on that map yet and I understand the developers got plans to increase the number of spawn points especially on some of the larger maps which frankly will be nice um, but let's look let's see let's take it in this order let's look at the maps first so um, I want to show you sort of where we're fishing now and then also go ahead and show you how many different fisheries we already have available. So here we're here at uh, Belarus and the Decora Pond. Uh, the second place you'll go starting at level six is this, this map here in Germany, uh, which I have unlocked based on my level currently, which as you see is level nine. The third place you'll go is Russia, this level here, which starts at level eight. After that, you need to get to 12, which that'll be the next place I open up and that's Ukraine. And then from there, you go to France, Italy, and then finally Finland. So you see we already have seven fisheries here available. Uh, frankly, I don't think I've seen anyone on a map. Uh, I think the highest level map I've seen is France, and I don't remember who that was. Uh, I, I've been streaming this game some, so I've also been watching other people stream the game. It seems like there's a, a really cool community. Uh, that's sort of building up around this. A lot of folks are players that I know from other fishing games and, and then some, some folks just sort of in this game. At least that's where I've met them. But uh, some really good fisheries so far. And presumably, since we're in early access, we may have more fisheries. Uh, this big view of the map potentially even will explore other parts of the world. Although maybe, given it's a, a game being developed from this part of the world, maybe all of the fisheries will be sort of in this part of the, uh, the map that you see on the screen. I don't know, but um, pretty cool start. And it's, it's uh, at least from what I've seen, it's always the car here that you want to press E when you run up to to, to travel. Um, secondly, we have the Trade Fish Company, and this uh, is a van where you can sell your fish. So after you've caught fish, this is where you'll sell them. And finally, here on this opening map, we have a shop. There's a variety of things here. Uh, you've got baits, and now this will change per map. The way that uh, the way that gear is gated in this game is basically going to be determined by the map that you're on. So when you move from the first map to the second map, you'll see suddenly there's new baits available that you haven't seen before. So that's kind of a cool feature. Um, but we've got 
baits, spoons, and lures, a few fly, uh, float rods to look at, spinning rods, and there are two of those, feeder rods, and these are the feeder rods available here on the first map. And you'll see, uh, one thing I do like in terms of the inventory, it'll tell you what you have. So we have, it says exactly how many we have of each of these baits. So we have at least one uh, or more than one of, of each of the baits that are available in this first map. Um, so where were we? Feeder rods, reels. There's only one reel available. Well, technically there's more than one reel. There's one sort of uh, overall, and then you can click and you see that there's four variations. And the power on the reel is what's changing as, as well as, as, of course, it's getting more expensive, but more powerful. But this STK Jackfish, two four six and eight is the initial reels that are available we do have some lines here and same thing as the reels if you click on the lines there will be uh other um subcategories within the lines that you can click on same with hooks um one thing to notice about hooks and this is true of some things in the game when you purchase one like if, if we purchase this for two silver we're actually getting three size big hooks for just the two silver, it's not for just one hook. So I didn't really realize that initially. And um, in fact, on the second map, I purchased a couple of carp hooks, which are pretty fairly expensive, you know, for at that point in the game. And without even really paying attention, all of a sudden I had purchased two stacks of them, which of course I didn't need at that point. Now hooks and some items do have durability, so they will eventually have to be replaced. So not a big deal. Um, so under the float section here, uh, it also has not only your floats for float fishing, but it's got a leash or a leader is what I'm more familiar with this being called. Um, I've heard other people saying that the leashes may be a little bugged right now on whether or not you actually need the higher leashes for the, but I'm not sure. I haven't confirmed that myself. I've just heard other people talking about that. Then the other port, port, important thing here is for if you're feeder fishing, of course, you're gonna need some weights as a part of your feeder setup. So that's what's there. Uh, in terms of accessories, this is what your keep net category is, at least on this map. And the one I have is actually the Kolba 2, which you pick up in the second map. So in Germany, I purchased the Kolba 2. But this is a good early investment when you feel like you can afford to upgrade your fish tank. I think I actually went from the initial one all the way until I, I purchased the Kolba 2 in Germany. So I kind of skipped these. I'm not saying that's the best thing to do. That's what I did, and I'll show you why that was in just a moment. Um, so past accessories. The other thing we have here is signals, and these are the bells, of course, for your feeder rods, and there are other signals available in later maps. So uh, the reason why I didn't purchase a bigger um, keep net, which if you hit C, you go to your keep net, and you can see what's in there. I didn't purchase a new one because I ended up doing 90% of the fishing I did on this first lake in this spot. And this just ends up being a great spot for float fishing, feeder fishing. Uh, you run it up along the shore here for some spin fishing, catching pike. So um, I'm sure there are lots of great spots on this map, and I do want to explore more. But the only places I really, I've fished here a lot, and then also at the very bottom of the map. So from camp, if you turn left and run all the way down there, there's a dam down there. And that ended up being a really nice spot as well, especially targeting Rudd. I found a spot down there that I ended up using. So um, before we fish, let me just mention a couple of things here about baits. Um, so blood worms for small fish, especially, uh, we'll get to this in a minute, but there is sort of a, it's kind of like a crafting system. It's basically you just turn fish into bait. So one of the things you can do is if you are catching really small fish and blood worms are good for this, you can turn them into live bait fish, which down the road you'll want to use. Um, I would say maggots are good early on. You're going to start with worms and bread, and those are both great. You're going to catch a huge variety of sort of early fish that your gear can handle on those. Uh, peas are good. You can catch um, bream or brim, although I don't think brim are on this map. Silver brim might be. Uh, pearl barley is another good one. Uh, dough and bread are both good for crucian. And before I forget... Uh, large crucian, just make a mental note of that, large crucian are going to be your money fish on this map, at least a very accessible money fish. In other words, a fish that you can catch fairly, you know, from the start, uh, you can catch those and 
really get a good return in terms of silver. And I would say those are the main thing. The other one bait I would mention is the lar larva bark beetle. So in a minute, we're going to talk about quests, which are one of my favorite parts of the game. And if you're get, trying to target fish, uh, especially rud, I've noticed, if you have a quest to catch rud, larva bark beetle will do a really good job of specifically targeting rud. Okay, if you see in the top right hand of my screen right now, you'll see I've got some quests up there. We have uh, an experience quest, an income quest, and a daily quest. So if you hit Q at any time, you're going to bring up your smartphone. And this is a really important thing to get to know. Uh, first of all, it'll show you the fish that are on this lake. So you got like silver brimmer here. Uh, it tells you a little bit about the fish, but basically the information you're going to get here is, is what, um, what fish are on the lake. And these four, uh, these four tabs up here, you can click on all of them. If you're ever wanting to cancel a quest, you can click on quest there. But you'll notice that you can get to that those tabs from any of these buttons. So, um, you know, from here you can click on statistic, you can see what fish you've caught, current quests you have, fish that are on the lake, and then the overall records, which the overall records are helpful just in the sense that you can see, okay, so these are the largest of these species. You can sort them a lot of different ways here, but it does give you an idea of what bait they tend to go for, at least what the large ones have gone for. Um, so for example, what would be a good example that would, um, so that's interesting. The largest crucian was caught on worm. And I certainly see crucians come off worm, but worm catches so many other things. If I'm trying to target large crucians, I don't think of worm as being a go-to there. So it's not always perfect information, at least, you know, but it's a place to get started, right? Uh, maggots and rough, at least the, the largest one has been called on that. So it can be helpful if you're just like, I have no idea where to start. I'm trying to target, you know, tench, and I don't know what tench bite. Well, it looks like Crab boilies, at least the largest one, <laughs> came out on that. So it gives you a starting point at least. But the thing I mostly want to highlight here is if you, if you click on the quest button, that is really the place that you want to focus early especially. Now, I would argue not just early. You're going to continue to do these. Quests are so much fun. They're grayed out for me because we already have active quests. But when you first start, this is a great way to earn experience you always want to do your daily quest if possible sometimes you'll get a tricky one like i've got grass gobies right now which is a little awkward but we're going to try to catch some uh, things like once you get comfortable catching grass pike you can make a lot of money um, because grass pike are pretty easy to catch once you kind of have that pinned down on what you want to use perch you know if you sit there and fish long enough you're going to catch you know hundreds of perch so uh, again there's these are just ways the income are going to give you money the experience obviously are going to give you experience supply is going to give you r baits that you may not have access to otherwise so like some of these baits are things you'll get on later lakes some of these baits are things that I, you know i say that and i may i may need to, to walk that back i know that supply quests will give you baits that you have to craft, which you can't craft, but you know, at, at this point, some of them at least, because um, you may not be able to catch large enough fish to make it into that, or you may not have the specific um, way. So let me show you what crafting actually looks like. If you go to your keep net by hitting C, and then pull up the cutting table, these are all of the baits you can create by catching certain fish. So if you catch a fish that's over one kilo, but less than five kilo, you can make these, the fish offals. And those are a very good bait if you're targeting certain things. Early on, mostly what you'll be doing is making bait fish, so anything under 50 grams, and fish pieces, anything that's from 400 grams to one gram. Now, you only wanna turn fish into bait if it's not worth your time to sell it. And we can talk about that, how you make that determination here in a minute. All right, let's do a little bit of fishing. And I don't want to go on forever with this first video because I do want this to be an intro video, but it only feels fair to do a little bit of fishing. When you first start, all you're going to have is this exact piece of gear. This is the rod and reel as well as the line that you're going to have. Um, a very small leash on here. 
and a tiny hook, which is appropriate. You can um, catch a lot of a lot of fish with a tiny hook. It is nice if you notice. Um, we'll have to do it from the inventory. The hooks actually tell you kind of what size fish you can expect to catch on them, if I'm not mistaken. And then your bait here. So this is a float rod fully put together. We don't have an attractant on there, but that's the only thing we're missing. You don't need an attractant. You're not going to have an attractant here at this early on in this process. So to cast your, well, first of all, plus and minus will set the depth. We can just stay at uh, one meter depth here. And to cast, you just hold down the left trigger and then throw it out. One thing that's helpful to notice, especially when float fishing, is your Z, letter Z, is going to let you zoom in. If it's too far away, that can be helpful. When the float goes down, go ahead and reel that in. Now we have, that is a nice little gudgeon that will turn into bait fish. Since we're using small hooks, we're likely to catch smaller fish. And on worms, we'll catch things like gudgeon. And I am very thankful to catch some bait fish here. So let's go ahead and put this back in, throw it slightly farther. At any point, you can set a rod down by hitting Y. It'll go right onto its rod stand. And if you are like me and really enjoy feeder fishing, then one of the first things you're going to want to do is complete a couple quests, catch a few fish, and then I think that's a oh that's a little roach. And then after you have earned a little bit of silver, you're going to want to go purchase a feeder. So the first feeder you will likely purchase will be something similar to this. And this is kind of the setup. It's a, uh, now this reel is a little bit more powerful reel. You're probably not going to actually go that powerful. And we don't need this big of a leash on here since we're fishing with worms. I don't have any of the twos available. We could go, I guess we'll put 1.5. I don't know, occasionally a worm will get you a carp or something, which makes you a little nervous. These leashes need to be worn out anyway. They're about to be thrown away. All right, so again, I just like sort of casting all around these lilies over here. So with a feeder, you know, you just throw it in, hit Y, put it on the stand. I think there's a fish just running around with our bait right now. Did we lose it? No, it's still on there. Another bait fish. And by the way, you can hit P to turn on your light. The letter P will turn on the lights, which is kind of nice. And with these small hooks and with worms on there, your bite rate should be pretty dang good. So now at this point, we've got a float in there. We've also got a feeder in. And now we're starting to catch some fish. There's a rud. And the rud is what I was telling you. You know, you see we got it on worm. And you can catch rud on different things. But that was what I was telling you. If you're really trying to go after rud specifically, uh, using the larva, the larva can be good. So if you go to your inventory hitting I, this is how you change your setup. So this is going to be our number one, our number two, and our number three. And we can drag them in and out of those spots to change what we have set up there. I think we've already caught something on our float rod again and our feeder's going off. So it's getting to be nighttime. It definitely, the bite rate changes a little bit and what fish you're catching. We're going to see a lot of, ooh, that's what we need for our daily quest. I think daily yeah did that count yeah okay so it's a total weight if you see we're supposed to catch a uh we're just three gram 24 ounce total of the grass gobies and that one was 102 grams so we've got a ways to go to finish that quest all right let's see if we still have a fish owner if it escaped it looks like it swam right to shore and it's not still on but when you first start out, you will just have the float rod, so you will just be paying attention to that float rod and uh, hopefully catching lots of fish to get you started. Again, you want to try to target quests. Um, my current experience and income quest are both perch. So anytime I catch a perch, it'll go towards both quests, which really helps you. There's a little, a little bait fish gudgeon, which really helps you for... Um, efficiency because you're doing multiple quests at the same time so you'll be getting that income and that experience or the supply quest done at the same time and sometimes you can even line it up with what your daily quest is as well and 
Then you really feel like you're rocking and rolling at that point. Good, another grass goby. Those are small ones though. Let's see if we can get, so we're gonna go from size zero hook to size one hook. And let's see if we still catch them, but maybe a little bit larger ones. We'll see if that how that works out. The float rod was getting a nibble, but it doesn't look like it's completely taken it. White bait, another another good fish for making live bait. So I can show you how that works real quick. If you go to, again, C to bring up your, your keep net, go to cutting table. And now if we click on bait fish, we've got four fish that we can turn into bait fish. And, you know, when you're first start, starting out, you may want to check and see how much a fish sells for. So, like, you run over to the the uh, fish company van and you look at that gudge and you say okay that sells for 0.01 silver it's like nothing right you see this little roach which roaches don't sell for much either but 0.17 is a lot more than 0.01 so it's definitely worth turning that gudgeon into a live bait fish because eventually that's going to turn into something worth a lot more than 0.01 silver so here's a, a little bit larger fish for a tiny hook. And this will sometimes happen, and you certainly could get spooled. Uh, I have been spooled many times with catching bigger fish than uh, we necessarily intended. So this is going to be a crucian. We'll see if this one is quite a large. Yes, it is a large crucian. So we're going to take that, and I want to show you how much that large crucian sells for. So remember, we were just looking at a fish selling for what was it, 0 0.01 silver? There's another grass goby, which makes us happy for our quest. So 0 0.01 silver, well, let's see how much that large crucian sells for. Usually, I think they're around seven. Oh no, 5.35, and then they can go up from there. But see, that's so much more value, and large crucians are not that rare or hard to catch, so that's why I was saying, to make some early money if you don't have an active income quest you're working on. At least having one rod that's working on getting large crucian with bread or dough is probably worth your time. Is that another? Yes, a large grass goby. That's what we like to see. And again, that was on the tiny hook, which is a good lesson for us to learn because, oh, I meant to show you something there on the recast. Next fish we catch, we'll, we'll do that. So if you look at your inventory and you go to hooks, these tiny hooks we're, we're using, if you right click on it, it says from fish from zero to 500 grams. But if you go to a three, it's from fish to seven grams, 20 grams. So it's kind of nice that it actually gives you an estimate of what size fish are ideal for that size hook. And I think from what I understand in the, um, in the game is that if, you're, if your hook is way too small, if you've hooked into a large fish with a small hook, it's more likely to get off. So it's, it's ideally you want to get the hook that sort of matches the fish size. And you'll definitely see that, fish, that hook size definitely matters in this game. Okay, what I wanted to show you is you can hit your letter T or your middle mouse button and it will automatically cast it to the same spot that you were last at. So as long as you're facing in the right direction there, it's gonna send it right back to where it was last time, which is really helpful. And so let's go to the records here and look up Grass Goby. Um, alphabet, alphabetized here. So the largest one is 508 grams. So what that means is we don't need anything bigger than a tiny hook. It's actually disadvan it's a disadvantage for us to have a larger hook on. We're going to decrease our bite rate. And for our quest to get those grass gobies, we're better off having the tiny hook in. So once you get going with your two feeder rods and a float rod, the game really starts to take off. And I will tell you, if you use the quest system to get both the silver, the money, and the uh, experience you'll get, then you'll start making progress quickly, especially in silver. You'll be able to start affording 
um, your first and second feeder set up really fast. I mean, I, I, I felt like I was able to get, um, to get the gear I wanted without a lot of grinding early on. I, I'm sure later in the game it's going to, and we're just nailing these grass gobies right now. This must be the time of day that they're really active or they really like these worms. I didn't remember catching a lot of these. I probably just haven't paid attention to them. But when I saw that my, um, there's a tiny roach. When I saw that my daily quest today was to catch these grass gobies, I was a little worried. It's actually probably not going to be that bad. Even though we have to catch a total of 3.24 kilos, uh, we'll be able to do that pretty reasonably. So the one other thing I wanted to show you, so if you go to your fishing rods here, um, this is the spinning setup. And this is a, I think this is the more expensive spinning rod from this lake. So it's something you can get very early. It's very affordable. And um, I wanted to point out this CRL Atom JS 5G. And I'll come back to that in just a second. You can see the picture and name of it in the bottom right hand side of the screen there. And I'll pull it out in just a minute. Now it's, it's the middle of the night, so we're not going to be able to catch uh, anything on it right now. But during the day, to me, it, of the lures that you can purchase on this first lake, it's the one that's best for just doing a uniform retrieval and getting a lot of, uh, there's another large crucian, and getting a lot of, um, it's a nice one getting a lot of grass pike, which if you can consistently catch grass pike, that is just a fast track to some early experience and income. Because those are the, you can often get multiple quests at the same time to catch those. So it is definitely worth doing. We're getting all kinds of live bait fish here. And we're also making some good progress on that grass goby. Okay, let me... Um, let me stop putting these in the water because we'll just I'll just keep doing this and this video will get way longer than I wanted it. There's a rud. Okay, you know what we haven't caught any of? It's interesting and we probably will have to go up in hook size um, to start targeting them a little bit better, but we haven't caught any perch, which is our other two quests. Uh, but if you look at the quest right now, even right now, there's a grass pike quest here. Oh, here's another perch. We can get some mollusk pieces. So once we do start catching perch, we'll have three quests to catch perch, which will be nice. The crawfish tails are also nice. I'm trying to think which ones I'm using more now. I think the mollusk pieces, um, catching some nice fish in uh, on the third map with those mollusk pieces. All right, let's bring this fish in, and then let's finish up this video with... Um, with me just showing you this spin spinning setup real quick. There's a silver bream. We got to see a silver bream. I like how they show the fish, the little weight, hand holding the little weight. You move it around, it has to settle to get the accurate weight again. And you hit space to take it. Now, if you've got a quest for that fish, you'll notice there'll be another button over here that says, take it without the quest. And the reason why they do that is because if you take a fish for a quest, then it's actually not going to be a fish that goes into your keep net. So you're not going to be able to sell it. So if you catch a really nice like blue fish that's worth some money, like those large crucians, you don't want to put those towards a quest. You just want to put those straight into your keep net so you can sell it. Okay, and I'll probably do a video a little more in depth at some point on these grass pike because it's really just really a valuable thing to to get going early on and there's a there is a lure on the second map that you can get that's even better but so I've got this on 35 speed I think around 35 40 but we are literally just we're just going to reel this straight in you can see it over there on the surface of the water coming across and it's pretty exciting you'll see a grass pipe just come up and nail it again it's middle of the night here we're not going to catch one right now sun's gone down but during the day this CRL Adam JS five gram lure, and I can show it to you in the shop real quick. It is, in my opinion, the way to go to have some early success. Here it is right here. It costs 0.01 silver. 
So you're gonna buy your spinning rod, which I think initially I got this one. I did, because I don't have the other one, it's 50 silver. You're gonna get a real spinning rod is, um, weight of 800, okay, so five gram. And then the, the real, you could match a, I think I, I think mine has the four, the friction to four gram on there. Well, we can look at it. Click on the wheel there to see what you've got going. And, oh no, I, okay, so I've got a six, six gram real six gram line and then again that that lure there which best and i haven't ever, ever even looked at this this actually describes what you want to do works best during the slow uniform guiding so that's it that is a good way to um to catch the grass pike and if you can get a bunch of grass pike uh, missions you can just quickly burn through those when you finish a quest uh, sometimes a certain amount of time has to go by before you can, you can only do a daily once a day and it shows you how long till it resets. But the other ones, you can just keep doing, keep doing these quests. So again, pay attention to your quest. It's one of the best parts of the game because it gives you a reward for catching fish that normally you would not want to be catching, you know, like the trash fish, like you can get two or three roach quests catch some roach and you're actually getting some really nice rewards for that when normally if you're just going to sell them you wouldn't make any money off of them so we're not going to have a, i mean this 12 silver it's not bad actually for you know early on but most of these aren't worth anything it's just these crucians that are and so like i'm going to sell these single fish the other fish if i can i'm going to turn these into bait before i sell them and that's what we're gonna do. So let me wrap this video up because again, I can just keep going and going and I'm, I, 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 I'm anticipating, I'm just having so much fun with this game. I do think I will, um, I'll be making more videos very soon. Please, uh, if you have any questions, let me know. If, if you wanna see more videos about the Fisher Online, well, you might see them whether you want to or not, but if, if you have particular requests or suggestions, again, please let me know. So great to, I uh, have found this game. I'm excited to be playing it right now. So um, I hope you are enjoying it as well. If you have stumbled upon it or if you're interested in it, uh, I can't recommend it enough, especially for the value right now. I think it's still $15 on Steam US. So it's a pretty dang good deal for uh, the fun that I've had in this game at least. Okay, as always, thanks for watching. I appreciate it.